Hello, it's Burgess Taylor, our Journey with Burgess. And uh, people requested that I show you our DIY floors, <laughs> where we painted the hardwood floors onto our cement slab. Um, I documented it into my creative journal, where I document creative life. So back in April, maybe, we found out that our window unit air conditioner in the dining room had been leaking down the wall and it had leaked all the way into not only the dining room, but the hallway, uh, part of the living room, the main bathroom, and then into the edge of the guest bedroom. We ended up having to rip up the linoleum that was in our dining room and part of the hallway. We ripped up the carpet from the hallway, the rest of the hallway, along with the padding. We ended up ripping up the carpet and the padding in the guest bedroom, as well as the linoleum in the bathroom. We had to do the guest bedroom first due to circumstances. David's parents called him and wanted to know if he wanted his bedroom furniture that was in their guest bedroom. And he said yes, because we had a futon in our guest bedroom, which was not the most comfortable. We had already painted the base coat in the hallway because that's where we were originally going to start but that's not how things always work out but we weren't sure how we were actually going to fix the flooring we didn't know we knew we couldn't afford to buy flooring because the flooring that we really wanted was either pergo or hardwood floors pergo is where it looks like hardwood floors but they kind of snap together like puzzle pieces so we knew it was going to be something that we had to do ourselves we didn't want linoleum again and we weren't sure what we were going to do. So we started searching DIY flooring for cement slabs. And a number of videos came up. Um, people were doing brown paper bags to make flooring. And then putting like a clear coat of polyurethane or something over it. We each found this video on YouTube. And we found several in fact. But the one that really showed something that we were interested in. And that we thought we could do was this one video about how to paint the hardwood flooring onto your cement make it look like real hardwood flooring so that there's a picture of the purple room with the shag carpet 30 something year old shag carpet yes <laughs> this has been a fixer upper of sorts our house so the purple room is no longer purple we realized after we ripped up the carpet in the hallway and then especially in the guest room just how dirty just how much dirt and David and I both decided we didn't want carpet anywhere in the whole entire house. So eventually we are going to be ridding, getting rid of all the carpet everywhere in the house. The video that we found showed us more of something that we imagined our floors to look like because we both love hardwood flooring. And we didn't want any more holes in our cement flooring because when we ripped up the carpet, how much wood and nails that we had to pull up with a hammer and a crowbar to get these things and we had to putty the holes in the cement that that had left where people had put down the carpet because you have to tack it and when you have cement slabs they use cement screws and nails and it left a bunch of holes in our cement slab so we had to putty that we got floor filler which was interesting we got brushes, we went to Lowe's, we went to Sherwin-Williams, we went to Walmart. We got cheap brushes because we knew they were going to get messed up and this was for cement flooring. We uh, went to Sherwin-Williams, I got the base coat which is a floor paint and it's called Harvest Wheat and I got that from Sherwin-Williams. I went to Walmart and got um, some stuff. I got the paint for the wall from Walmart. <laughs> It's called A Touch of Gray. You'll see that later in just a few moments. And it took two coats, and that was Valspar paint, and it had the primer in it. And it still took two coats to cover the purple. Yes, the purple is a beautiful color, but it's really way too dark for such a small room. But that was what my stepdaughter wanted. And um, so it was on, it's been on there for years. <laughs> so anyway... I'm going to leave a link to the video that inspired us to do the DIY flooring below in the description. But we watched that video must have been 10 times. We got the supplies, like I said, and then we ended up starting with the guest room. I, well, we already had the base coat and the hallway puttied. We had it puttied and we had the base coat on it. But we ended up actually starting with the guest room. And maybe that was a blessing in disguise. 
because furniture was going in that room unlike in the hallway really and there is a learning curve we found there to be quite a bit of a learning curve my first slat of wood that i painted oh we had to go back in there's the base coat we had a heck of a time we ran out of paint and we had to go to lowe's we had to go to walmart the next day and get some more paint so we we did part of the floor we did part of the walls till we ran out of paint and then we started on the flooring because Walmart and Lowe's were closed. We ended up taking old sheets and putting it down on the flooring where we had finished the flooring so we could finish painting the walls. When it was all said and done, we had figured out what really worked for us. What worked for us wasn't what we originally thought. I thought David would be better at doing the dark espresso colored paint along the edges where it would show the line for each plank and then he maybe do the brown in the middle the medium tone brown because you mix that paint with water half and half the actual browns you mix with water but no and then I would do the brush where you go across it against the grain to make it look like wood but David did much better with that I can do it it was hard work but it was well worth it in the end it's definitely well worth it so after we got a few planks going, we really got our groove and that, that, that was a learning curve. It was definitely a learning curve. What we found was that once we got our groove and we worked in unison, I would make the dark part of the knot and David would make the swirls because real wood isn't perfect. It has knots and grooves and swirls and its own natural patterns. So we, we didn't worry about trying to make it perfect, which is what we did with the first one or two planks. And we realized soon that wasn't going to work at all. By the time we got like quite a few planks, <laughs> we realized just how intensive this was. David had taken time off. He had taken my birthday Thursday and Friday off. So he was off Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We wanted to get it finished up so that Sunday he could rest because he had to go back to work Monday. But that didn't work out quite that way. By the time we were done, we worked on my birthday. Uh, David stayed up later and then he wished he hadn't because I finally was so exhausted I went to bed. <laughs> the next day we started out again and we started fresh and I fixed some of the things. But I realized and I told him it wasn't as bad as we thought. Some of these things that we thought were imper imperfections actually made the wood look more real. Like I said, it's definitely a learning curve and we actually painted on each plank it is painted on you have a base coat you have a very dark color of brown and then a medium tone of brown and you really do want to mix that paint half and half with water you don't want it real thick and you don't want to cover up all the yellow you don't want to use too much of that medium brown or too much of the dark uh, you really don't um we learned <laughs> we definitely learned in the end, sorry for the glare from the pictures, but David and I both took some of these pictures. They came from our phones. I tried to get really good pictures, but you can kind of tell some of the slats were lighter. Some of the slats are darker. Like I said, it was a learning curve. Um, we did have to, because we ran out of the paint for the wall, like I said, we did have to put the sheets down to protect the floor that we'd already done. Uh, we did make a mistake with the polyacrylic, which is what we chose to use instead of polyurethane. Polyacrylic is water-based instead of acrylic-based. It dries faster and it's less smelly, but it still smells. So you have to have some kind of ventilation or mask or something. So tomorrow morning, we have already finished our hallway. I am going to be putting the polyacrylic on and then I'm going to leave the house to run some errands like going to the post office and all these and then it will be drying. And then while it's drying, I'll be out of the house, so I won't have to smell it. We ended up we ended up going through quite a bit more of the putty and quite a bit more of the base coat. I got two cans from Sherwin Williams of the base coat, which, like I said, is flooring paint. It is paint for your patio or something like that, because a lot of people do this for their patios or for their like screened-in porches and things like that. You can really get a sense of the flooring and the pictures where we have the sheets and we're finishing up the walls. Like I said, the walls did take two coats to cover up the purple. Um, we got all of that room done in one weekend. On Sunday, we on Saturday, we moved the furniture in. On Sunday, we did the touch-ups and then we moved the furniture where we wanted it and got everything set up. You will see a picture of our now actual guest room. We have a proper guest room. Victor is really excited. He calls it his room and Day Day's room because David has his guitar and some of his music stuff in there. 
So Victor's calling it his room and Day Day's room. It's no longer the purple room. So Dave and I have been calling it the music room. <laughs> but it's actually our guest room. So like I said, we, we got that bedroom done first. And then over this past, over the, the other weekend, this past weekend, we actually did the hallway. Now we have the bathroom left to do. Once we have the bathroom finished, we're going to work on the dining room and then the paneling in the dining room. I have to get some blind, I have to get a, a set of blinds for that window in the guest room and um, some more pictures. We're, we've got one or two, but one of them I've got to get a frame for. So I'm just excited. I'm, I'm excited our guest room is done. <laughs> it's a proper guest room now. It's going to take a little bit of time to do that dining room. So it may take us two weekends to get it done, depending if we can. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I'm hoping that we'll be doing Labor Day weekend maybe we'll be doing because it'll be a long weekend we'll be doing the living room or maybe the paneling in the dining room but we're working on things and I'm happy I'm excited the bathroom's going to be a challenge getting around the cabinet and the toilet but we'll get it we'll get it and I got paint all over the places so we're actually going to have to redo the trim in white and we're also going to have to put that little I don't know what it's called it's the little tiny piece of wood not the baseboard but that little tiny piece of wood that goes along the trim that goes along there yeah we still got tape on the walls so you can see where some of the base like where I've got to put base coat on the dining room that you could see the cement and you could see a tiny bit of base coat hiding underneath um, but we're we're excited we're excited we've got it done and um, we're happy with it and that's what really matters so I'll see y'all again real soon I hope that you've enjoyed this and like I said the link to the video that we used to go by it is down below. We did not use the same kind of paint he did, uh, but we did use his technique. So I hope you have a good one. Bye y'all.